Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's reading of Ruby on the Outside. We are almost done with this book. Okay, we're picking up on page 130. It's okay, Matu says when I am finished. Rinse up. Splash some water on your face. She walks me over to the sink. My mother is gone. She's gone. There's nothing and no power on earth or in heaven that's going to let me see my mother again today. I sent her away. I did that. I hurt my mother. I know she's a mess now, wondering what's wrong with me and not being able to do anything about it. She'll want to call, but she can't just use the phone whenever she wants to. I know she'll want to. I start sobbing all over again, and now I feel like I'm going to throw up a second time. I am thinking about my mother and Margaret and Josh Tips and Margaret's mother who will hate me forever. How could she not? She should. I hate myself. And if, by some miracle, she didn't hate me, she'd never be able to look at me the same. It's all ruined. I've lost my best friend and I've lost my mother. Breathe, Matu says. Try to calm down. Then tell me what's going on. I don't throw up again, but I feel my legs getting weaker. My knees give out and my whole body slides down along the wall until I am sitting on the floor. I can see it in Matu's face. Oh, that dirty floor, that dirty wall. Ruby, she wants to say, what's the matter with you? It's filthy in here. Straighten yourself up. Stand up. Pull yourself together. Get over it. Put a lid on it. But she doesn't. I watch as Matu slithers down, her back against the wall, until she slides right next to me. She doesn't let her bottom touch, but instead she kind of balances on the heels of her shoes. Tell me, Ruby, what's going on? Chapter 21 once upon a time, a long time ago, before I was born, there were two sisters who lived in an apartment alone with their mother. Just three weeks earlier, their dad had run off with another woman. So now it was just the three of them. And because the mom started spending a lot of time in bed, the older sister had to do a lot, like making meals and making beds and making sure the two sisters got to school on time. And the mother kept sleeping a lot. And then one morning, the mother didn't wake up forever. Since their dad was nowhere to be found and their mom was now gone, the two sisters went to live with strangers, but at least they got to stay together. Things in that house of strangers were not always nice, but still, the older sister tried to keep things as normal as she could, as tight as she could, as controlled as she could. She vowed to, she would always take care of her little sister, but the world around them was out of control. And then the two sisters grew up. One stayed as close to the rules and limits as she could, pushing only the button she knew would work. The other sister, the younger one, kept running around, edging close to the limits, peeking over the top, pushing any button she could, as if she was trying to find the one that would make up their mother that mo wake up their mother that morning and make everything safe again. That was my mother, I asked Matu, the younger sister? Yes, sweetheart, that was your mother. Matu is still crouching with me on the bathroom floor. A few people have come and gone. They take one look at us, do their business, wash their hands, and leave. No one seems to think it's strange. Here, nothing is strange. No one is judged because everyone has been judged already. And then after your real father, may God rest his soul. My real father is dead? 